hear these words from the Psalms. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make melody. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, amongst the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over the earth. Please join us as we sing, proclaiming the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God.
this place 
Hi everyone, it's good to be able to worship together. And it's good to be with you as God's people. Hi to all the Hope Valley folk and welcome to you all who might be connecting in from outside the valley. We are glad that you can be with us today. It's only a few weeks ago really that we were processing and pouring out our hearts to those devastated by fire. But it seems a lifetime ago. And here we are coming before our God with more in our hearts and minds. And yet God welcomes us in again and again by his grace, through his mercy and his unending love. And so may the peace of the Lord be with you. Throughout this week, I've been drawn into the letters to Peter. I've been strangely comforted by these words about the sense of time that God has. In 2 Peter 3.8, it simply says this, Beloved, don't be ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is but one day. Friends, God is in your moments, and God is over all time. I want to introduce you to Barb. Barb is a part of our prayer team. And she, with Pastor Scott Button, have been leading a team in all our pastoral connections over this last week. They have enjoyed being able to share with you, hear your burdens, even some of the joys in this last week. And Barb is going to lead us in prayer here today. Thanks, Barb. Thanks, Kynan. I believe in a God who cares deeply for all of his people who wants us to call upon his name and who faithfully answers us. So wherever you are right now, tuning into church online, join me as we pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. You are in all things and you are through all things. Jesus, your name is high above every other name. We come here to honour you and we come to cast all of our cares upon you. Father, our world has changed again in this past week. Our lives are further impacted with tighter restrictions that simply don't come naturally to us. Help us, Father, to yield to these, knowing that in doing so, we are yielding to your authority and love. Father, our community is surrounded by fear, anxiety, panic. Holy Spirit, flood us with the peace of Jesus. You are the one constant in our lives right now and for all eternity. We put our trust in you and you alone. We pray for our political leaders and chief medical officers, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Premier Stephen Marshall, Brendan Murphy and all of the state premiers. Thank you for their voices of leadership. Hold them steady, Father. Impart more wisdom to make good decisions for all of our people. For the researchers and teams of medical staff responding in technical and hands-on roles, guide and guard them, Lord. Our economies, God, they're in turmoil. We ask you to intervene. We lift up business owners, employees and families impacted by business closures, job and income losses. We cry out to you for all and for our Hope Valley people. We are feeling this, Father. Sustain us and provide for us, Lord. We pray for our children, our students and teachers. Help them to adapt to this changing environment where we live, learn and work in new ways. We pray for those who are sick, in isolation and grieving loss. We ask for your peace and comfort. Father, you are above this disease. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you cease the spread and heal your people. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Let you be glorified in all of this. Praise you and thank you, Father. Amen. Wherever you are, let us pray together. God of grace, God of truth, God of life. We come before you seeking to hear your voice, your word of certainty in a time of uncertainty. Come to us wherever we are, 
that your, your Holy Spirit would speak to us and minister to us as only the Holy Spirit can. Be with us, we pray, as we open up your word together. Amen. It's been a fascinating week as so much has transpired in our nation. Two competing voices. One is this very real and strong voice which talks about the health of people. And we are all for keeping as many people healthy. That is driving the decision makers of our country. And we hope that there will be many people who will be able to keep living well because of the restrictions which are taking place. I know that I have put my parents in isolation and said, look, don't come out for anything. And even my in-laws saying, look, we'll communicate in other ways. It's on the top of everyone's thinking is how do we keep people safe and well at this time? And it's a very strong voice. And then we have this other voice which is going on as well, going, well, each time that we restrict something, it's going to affect the way in which we live, the economy. And I've heard some voices from people who are just devastated by what is happening with their business. I've talked with people who are saying we're having to get in line to talk to Centrelink and they've never done that before. Two very big voices competing and it's very difficult. Whatever way we go, we can see that there's pain. And there's going to be some suffering and everyone's having to do their bit to be able to get through this difficult time ahead of us. Two voices. But over that, there seems to be this one other voice which is really coming through. It's the voice of the virus. And that voice is driving everything. And as much as we try to listen to what the governing authorities are saying, and, and as we speak about what we're doing with our children, and as we put people in kind of isolation, and as we distance ourselves, there is this big voice which is driving all of it. And we don't hear it, and we can't see it but it seems to be impacting us in such a way that we will never forget the season that we're in. And our prayer is, Lord, just get us through the, the best that we can. And in times of uncertainty, as much as we have this voice over seeing us and speaking into us, we as believers want to hear one voice, really. God, in these uncertain times, may we hear you. May we be able to hear the prompt of your spirit. May we be aware of your wisdom. May we be aware of your presence. And when we're finding it hard to hear in amongst the noise, God, God, may we just hear you. That's all we need. And so as we engage with the scriptures today, that is my prayer for you. That in this moment, as we gather as believers in different places, that you will hear the voice of God. As we've been working through the creed here at Hope Valley, and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you with us. We've been working through the Apostles' Creed. And the first part of the Apostles' Creed is vertical. That is, it, it talks about our belief in that which is in relationship to God. It opens up about saying, we believe in the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And then it goes on and says, we believe in Jesus Christ, God's Son, our Lord. And the third part of what we believe in a vertical way is we believe in the Holy Spirit, which we talked about last week. And all these vertical work is about our relationship with God and how we hear from Him. Well, this next bit which comes in says, well, yes, we have this vertical relationship with God, but then we have a horizontal one, the way in which we relate to each other and hold on to this vertical relationship with God as well. And it's so critical at this time that we really believe passionately in how we connect to each other as we press into God because we are now finding ourselves more and more isolated and yet desiring like crazy to be connected. So the Apostles' Creed goes on, it says, I believe in the Christian church. And sometimes it says that the Catholic church, and that means it's universal. And this brings in the horizontal way of living out the gospel. And we find that it is the way in which we live out through the church the vertical truths that we know about God. That indeed, 
the church keeps on proclaiming God as Father, God as Son, and God as Holy Spirit. And then we keep communicating those truths to each other in a horizontal way because they are worth holding on to. In fact, the church is the longest serving institution that our world has known. And it's called an institution because institute in the very best use of that word says it holds on to that which is valuable. And that which is valuable is this understanding of who God is and it holds that in a valuable way and then we live that out to each other. And so the best use of the word institute is that it establishes and keeps reminding us of these vertical truths about who God is. And the church, friends, the church the Christian church, which has Jesus at the very centre of who she is, has lasted through empires, has lasted through persecution. It has survived wars that have touched all of the globe. And friends, it has lived through pandemics. The church, the Christian church, God's people, the longest institution our world has ever known, because it proclaims the truth about who God is. And we now reeling from a, a virus which is spreading across the globe and its implications on our everyday life, we want to know God as a Father who loves us, Jesus as a Saviour who keeps on saving us and as a friend, and the Holy Spirit who deeply is our comfort and guide. And we keep proclaiming that because we are the church. But if we look right back to how this church got going, we, we see that it was this beautiful new community. It, it kind of was birthed that Jesus gathered his close friends, those early disciples, and he started to teach them what the kingdom of God was looking like. And he met with them in deep relationship. And in that was saying that God is not far away, but God is close. And he related to them and he showed them the miracles of God. He showed them how God was active in fear. He gathered them together and equipped them for life according to a higher purpose. This was the very first kind of church, I guess, as Jesus met with those friends and those disciples. And we see them learning and growing, not always getting it right, but at times just so alive in what God was doing, even though there was other people who didn't understand it. They said, this is a new way of living. And they became so committed, even though they had their ups and downs, and even though they struggled when Jesus went on that lonely walk to the cross. But we see that they then encountered the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Jesus had ascended into heaven and said that I'll give you another counsellor, another advocate, one who'll be with you, who'll lead you to do greater things than even what I could do. And at Pentecost, God breathed upon those believers as they gathered and the church was born and these believers went out with a new power, a new purpose, continuing the incredible works of Jesus. And as they went about, they said, no, we've got to gather as a new community now. We experienced it when Jesus was on this earth, but now we experience this new power leading us and we see these new communities gathering and we see some beautiful pictures if you check out Acts 2, 42 to 47 of the way in which they are interrelating. And what was defining this new community? It wasn't style. It wasn't the way in which they sang their songs. It wasn't the way in which they met together. No, what defined this community was a common new life in Jesus. That Jesus was the one who defined them. It was a fresh work that Jesus was doing. And ever since the church was born and, and spread out and it has survived everything, it has always gathered around that very simple and beautiful truth, gathering around the new work that Jesus was doing, the living Lord by his spirit as a resurrected people. And so the scriptures have gone on and they've sought to describe this new community. And there's a number of images which talk about it. One of them is the body of Christ. And that simply says that every person who is a part of this body of Christ, of part of the church, part of this new community, has something which they can contribute. 
They are a member of it. And together, as each member does its little part, Jesus is embodied here on earth. We often get a sense of that when we gather in church. And of course, we're not doing that, but still that body of Christ imagery is there in the biblical imagery. Another one is that we are a new family. We are now brothers and sisters in Christ. That we experience the joys of what goes on in family, some of the struggles that go on with family. But in all of this, we know that Jesus is at the centre. Just this last week, as I was kind of working with people who are struggling with what was going on, in the middle of a conversation, my phone went beep, and I looked at it and there one of the gorgeous families in our church had just sent through a text message and in it was a pic. They were celebrating that the night before they had just given birth to a brand new baby boy. He was gorgeous and handsome. And I thought that is what the family is. You know, the scriptures simply say, you know what? We weep with those who are weeping and we laugh with those who are laughing. Really it's saying in this family, we are all in it together. And at any one point, in time, there is deep struggle, but there is also deep joy. And because Jesus is in the middle of it, we can keep on coming through, through Jesus to each other and experiencing a sense of being family. The Bible also talks about it being a spiritual temple of living stones, the church. Now, I love this because at the very core of that is this understanding that Jesus, again, is the cornerstone. Notice how Jesus is at the centre of all of this new community called the church. A spiritual temple of living stones. Now, we think about a cornerstone and some of you might go to a, a building which was built a long time ago, a hundred plus years, majestic in its cathedral type. And there you'll find a cornerstone and it will talk about what that church was built on. Even Hope Valley here, which is more of a contemporary building, has a cornerstone. June the 3rd, 1973, the stone was laid to the glory of God. And it talks about the church being built around a cornerstone. But of course, the scriptural image of the church is not that it's a building, but it's made up of God's people who are living and active in Jesus. And they themselves have the cornerstone of Jesus at the very heart of it and then are able to be alive and organic. The church isn't a dead static building. No, friends. The church is God's people, living stones. And then in John 15, it talks about people being the branches connected into the vine of Jesus, kind of connected into that community. And that scripture says that as we're connected into the church, we are called to bear fruit. We are called to continue on the ministry of Jesus to, to grow on and produce things which are good, which reflect the kingdom of God. And so all these biblical images sit there. And I think the fascinating thing about this is that in all of this, as we read about the scriptures and even as we read the New Testament letters, there's a few yes which are written specifically for individuals. We see about it in Titus and, and Timothy and so on. But many of them, friends, are written to churches. They're written to groups of people because they're written to groups of people because it's in the grouping of God's people that the Spirit of God is most pleased to dwell. For yes, we are individuals and we have our own thoughts and we encourage a devotional life. But friends, God's great idea with the church, that which he breathed his power, that which he sent his very own son to be the cornerstone of, that which he would have, this is the greatest plan that I have for people to be able to come into my presence was through the church. A group of people understanding that no, we are coming to each other through Jesus. That we're going to experience new life through Jesus and we will carry that on. I just want to take a little focus here and talk about what I think is the most powerful image for us today particularly in what is going on in light of our world. And so I just draw your attention to 1 Peter 2, verses 9 to 10, because it says these words as Peter writes about his understanding of God's people. For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, 
a people for his own possession. Don't you love that language? That we've been created, that God might be able to control us, that we belong to him. We don't belong to a virus finding its way. No, we are his possession. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Friends, what it really draws upon here is a few things which I just want to bring to our attention here today. Firstly, we are a royal priesthood. Wherever it is that you might be on the spiritual spectrum, whether you're an early believer, whether you're kind of sussing things out, or whether you feel like you are mature, when we come to faith, we become not sinners who cannot do anything, but indeed brought into the priesthood. That is that we are allowed to now minister to one another. We're effectively saints and royal ones at that. What a high calling is given to believers as we understand this. And this is what's so beautiful about this understanding of being a royal priesthood. This is what I really want to get through to you today. Often we will go to the building, the church, so that a pastor or a minister or one of the prayer team can minister to you. But the great releasing understanding that comes from this scripture is that each one of us is able to minister to another. Which means if you're a parent and your kids are at home, you are now the minister to them. If you are a, someone who is a, working with a business team or someone, however it is that you might be able to understand it, you are ministering to them. It's so critical at this time that you know that you are empowered to minister, that the person next to you, you can pray for them. And it's just as effective as anyone else praying for them. And so the scripture goes on, it says, what are we proclaiming? We are proclaiming the excellencies of God. We are proclaiming the good things about who God is. We are proclaiming that he is faithful to us. He has led us through the past. We can see that he will, even though we're uncertain about the future, that he will be there at the very end. We proclaim that he is still good. We proclaim that he is going to bring his peace. We proclaim that through him, we might discover things which we would never have discovered if we hadn't gone into restricting ourselves, slowing life down a little bit. And so friends, I want to speak over to you the excellencies of God at this time. The good shepherd, the guardian of your soul, the one who wants to minister into your anxieties, the things that are worrying you. This is the excellencies of God. And this scripture brings us together and it says, you were in darkness, but you've come from that place and you're now into a new light. And you come together into that as a people. And what we actually are is together we are braver. Together we aren't really caught up in the things which might to bring us to despair, which the isolation might bring. But in a connected way, we are able to encourage each other in our faith. At this time, it's so important that we stay connected spiritually, emotionally. Even though it can't be that we're physically together, the more that we connect still, the braver we become. And that's so important. And not only that, as this body of Christ, as the, the royal priesthood, as the people of God, when God leads us to pray, we cover the breadth of prayers that God wants to bring before him. To be honest with you, this last week, I started to think about the things that I had to pray for. And the list just extended, and extended, extended. I thought, I can't do this on my own. I can't pray all these prayers. I don't have enough time. It's too emotional, half of it. But then I thought about the priesthood of the believer. I thought about each of us proclaiming the excellencies of God. And I simply said, friends, take this ministry of Jesus wherever you are. 
When God leads you, you pray. When God says, speak a word over, you speak the word over. When God's calls you to connect with another, connect with them. And together, the royal priesthood of God's people, the church, will live and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Be the people of God where God has placed you and God will do a way which will keep on extending his kingdom through this season and the season to come. Let us be in prayer together. God, you've called us to be your church, to proclaim your excellencies, to gather around new life in Jesus, to be a people who pray in and speak into every circumstance. Lord, in these challenging times, still display to us the riches of who you are. And may we believe in the church, not the building, but the people of God, wherever they are. You keep on trusting us the keys of the kingdom. You've given them to us. You've empowered your church. Your Holy Spirit drives us. Together we are braver. May we always be declaring the goodness of God. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, today we have an opportunity to sow into a mission field beyond Adelaide. Each month at Hope Valley, we sow into a mission offering, which will go to benefit those beyond our borders. And today's mission offering is to support the Christian work which has been done out of Udnadatta. Now, Udnadatta is an iconic outback town. It's over a thousand k's north of Adelaide, and then a further 200 k's north of Coober by a very, very rough road. Udnadatta has a population of just around 200 people, three quarters of whom are First Peoples. The town was the first site of a Frontier Services nursing station and was set up as a watering stop for the original Gann Railway to Alice Springs. Today, Julia Lennon is part-time pastor for the Congress Udnadatta Faith Community and part-time with Frontier Services as the Udnadatta Bush Track Chaplain, ministering to First Peoples throughout the vast northern regions of South Australia. Previously, Hope Valley Church supported the Udnadatta Church Building Appeal. Plans for the building are progressing and the offering today will go towards this and supporting youth and young adults leadership and discipleship. Your support is greatly appreciated. You can give via the mission prompt in the Hope Valley app, by direct debit or through our website and we encourage you to give. And just the other week I spent some time with Julia and she wanted to be recorded sharing a little word of thanks. Hello, Hope Valley. Um, my name is Julia. I'm the pastor of Udadara. And I just want to thank you for uh, your offering towards our church and your support and your love. And you know, because God is doing amazing things, transforming lives and you know, just touching souls and land them to, you know, show his love in this little community. But I just want to thank you, Hope Valley, for what you're doing for us. God bless you. Friends, thank you for supporting the work up at Udnadatta. Friends, we're a part of churches which are going to continue this mission, come what may. And so today I invite you to give, to give to your local church. Hope Valley folk, these are the ways that you can give. And if you're from other churches, please keep sowing in to your ministries. We have got such good news to share. We want to keep the hope alive. And each of you, as you can, be in ministry one to another. Be the priesthood, as I talked about in my message. And as we go from here, let me share with you the final words in the book of Jude. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory be majesty, be dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.
Let us worship our God as we are brave for Him. Amen.